Amen. Uh, we're talking about freedom, liberty, and justice for all. <laughs> How many remember the Pledge of Allegiance when you were in school? <laughs> Amen. They, they used to make us do that all the time. But I just want to have a moment of prayer for one second before I get into the message tonight. Father, I thank you for the people of God that are here that have decided to uh, hear the word of God tonight. I thank you that you have given us freedom. You have given us liberty. And all we need do is but walk in it. I thank you, Lord God, that there is no, no one in the world that can strip us of our liberty. I thank you, Lord God, that you've given us the word of God to confirm our freedom in you. And Lord God, tonight as the word of God goes forth, I pray that it will inspire your people to do as Paul said, hold fast to our liberty that we have in Christ Jesus. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. All right. Now hold on to your horses. Because uh, our message tonight is going to be dealing with some things. I don't usually get, you know, real political on a lot of things. But s some things have been raising their head in our society. And as, as I if anybody's been watching the news at all, uh, last Friday, late last Friday, uh, June 24, 2011, marked a day of freedom for many LGBT Americans in the state of New York. Uh, uh, as the bill for gay marriage was passed 33 to 29. Amen? On the Senate floor. We praise the Lord for that. I do. I do. The Reverends Jason McGuire and Dwayne Motley of the Anti-Gay Marriage New Yorkers for Constitutional Freedom said, the First Amendment to the Constitution guarantees that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. He said this decision is a clear violation of the protection of that protection. The decision still fails to protect an individual's right to exercise their religious freedom, Reverend McGuire said. Reverend Motley add, added, this amendment language does nothing to protect the cake bakers, the caterers, the photographers, the florists, and other people of strong religious faith opposed to same-sex marriage that refuse to provide service to same-sex couples. Now, forgive me here, but I must say that if the cake bakers and the caterers and the florists and dressmakers of strong religious faith who oppose same-sex message decide not to provide service for us, I think we'll be all right. <laughs> 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 Reverend Pat Robertson, a well-known Christian broadcaster of the 700 Club, again made some inflammatory remarks stating, now God will destroy America. In the same way, God historically destroyed every other civilization that openly embraced homosexuality. He went on to say that our modern use of the word sodomy is derived from the homosexually sinful behavior of those who lived and were destroyed in the city of Sodom and that America's decisions to allow gay marriages is equivalent to the same. Well, let's take a look at it, shall we? I mean, really, if all this controversy is based in the idea that God hates homosexuality and we are basing our modern understanding of that story of Sodom and Gomorrah, then at least for the believer, it bears some looking at, don't you think? We ought to be able to take a look at the scriptures for ourselves. Especially if you happen to be a person who is lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgendered, who cares anything about God or what God thinks, even if you're straight. If you really care anything about what God thinks, then this subject, this story, bears some looking at. If I am a believer and I care about what the Bible has to say, about my life, then I ought to spend some time exploring it. Amen? If I don't know nothing else about the Bible, 
or about being a believer. I know this. I know God wants us to love him and love our neighbors. If I'm one who really wants to obey God, I at least ought to spend some time actually looking at what the Bible says. How do you think it's going to go down for you when you face God and perhaps in this one area of your life you have been missing the mark purely because you were afraid to take a look at the scriptures? Or perhaps you've just decided to settle for the explanation that somebody else spoon fed you saying, well, it makes sense to me, so that must be what it is. And when the word of God clearly tells us to trust in the Lord with all your hearts and lean not to your own understanding. And as we are focusing our thoughts and our actions this month on our freedom in Christ, I sense in the spirit that it is time for many of us to be free. It is time for us to be free, free from some erroneous mindsets. In the body of Christ, we need to get free from some bad teaching. We need to get free from whatever it is that is keeping us bound, keeping us from walking in liberty. We need to be free from the idea that the blood of Jesus and the work of the cross somehow was not enough. We need to be free. Somebody say, I need to be free. I need to be free. And with all that has been in the news recently with the favorable decision on gay marriage in New York, predictably, there have been what has come to be the standard rumblings and grumblings amongst preachers, amongst the church community, a myriad of sermons and sound bites filled with hateful language and rhetoric that virtually have no truth whatsoever and thus have no lasting spiritual value. Yet, church after church and sermon after sermon is filled with excited shouts and amens as people lend their agreement to these divisive words that maim and alienate an entire segment of humanity from freely accessing the benefits of the cross. To those who would use this decision as an opportunity to sow discord among the gay and lesbian, bisexual, transgender communities, to those who will fill pulpit space and blatantly continue to proclaim lies instead of the truth. For the voiceless, who really desire to be free once and for all from religious oppression and spiritual abuse, I ask this question tonight. So who are you calling a sodomite? I say, who are you calling a sodomite? Really, inquiring minds really want to know. And I know this sounds like fighting words tonight. Well, you're right about it. And I'm just as bowed about it as any of the rest of them. Because today I recognize that I am indeed in a battle. I'm in a battle. I'm in a contest. I am in a fight for the truth to be known. So I say, who are you calling a sodomite? What indeed were the sins that brought these great cities of Sodom and Gomorrah down in ash, down in destruction by the hand of God? Just what kind of abominable things were these people engaging in that would move God to such wrath and such anger to scourge this people from the face of the earth entirely? What were they doing? So I need you to open your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel. If you don't know where Ezekiel is, the scripture that I'm dealing with is the first passage on the back of your bulletin. The first scripture reading that we have in the back of your bulletin. Ezekiel 16, 49, and 50. Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 49 and 50. 
and I'm reading. The word of God says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Verse 50, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. Took them away as I saw good. Pride, gluttony, Laziness, selfishness, puffed up, abomination. These are the words that the Bible uses to describe the conditions and the sins of Sodom. Pride, haughty, pride. Hey, you know, y'all heard those words before? Pride, haughty. Dictionary.com defines pride as a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity. In, uh, a high opinion of one's own importance, merit, or superiority, whether as cherished in the mind or as displayed outwardly in bearing or conduct. It also defines haughty, somebody say haughty, as having or showing arrogant superiority to and disdain of those one views as unworthy. Let me break that down for you. In other words, it's those folks that walk around thinking they stuff don't stink. <laughs> they think they better than you and everybody else. Those that think they got it all together and you don't. They are those that think they have their finger on the pulse of who God is and feel like they have the right to put the speck out of your eye while they still have a beam in theirs. They are those that look down on you because of what you got and what they ain't got. Or perhaps what you ain't got, but they do got. They want to tell you you ain't dressed how I believe you should be dressed. You don't smell like I believe you should smell. You're not supposed to love the person that you love, and you're not supposed to be believing what you believe. And based on that, I ain't going to be able to sit at the dinner table with you. I'm not going to be able to sit in the church pew next to you because God has brought me a mighty long way. And I just don't believe God would want me to fellowship with the likes of unclean you. I'm better than that. I'm better. See, I used to be like you. But now, see, I, I, I got a job now. Uh, oh, 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 I got a place of my own. I, I, I got a car now. See, I, I married now. <laughs> I, I, I got off the drugs. I, I'm, I'm, I'm only sleeping with two now instead of ten. Uh, but, but how about this? Oh, I even go to church now. See, I used to be like you. But now I, 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 I'm better. And I need to say this to you today. No matter how wonderful you think you are or how together you think you got it, the word of God says our righteousness is as filthy rags before him. And that all have sinned and come short of his glory. Somebody say, I'm too short. I'm too short. I can't reach it. I cannot attain the righteousness of God on my own. I'm talking today about who are the real sodomites. I'm talking about who are the real sodomites. They they they. they they, they think that they can reach the righteousness of God on their own. The word says they were a proud and haughty people. The Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So it was already on the way. Right. It was already coming. It didn't happen in that moment. God had already decided to destroy the city. 
all the he says he says he says they were stuck up they were full of themselves they were full of bread they were a gluttonous people all they could think about was eating and feeding their flesh they were idle people they were lazy they never want to do no work but they always want to eat up all the food uh, uh oh bless them it doesn't sound like nobody around here i just can't I, uh, uh when when the church calls for them to come out for the yard sale when the choir rehearsal is going on or, or shoot just be on time for church they can't seem to bring themselves to do it but let it come down to the last few servings of the meal. And they want to make sure that they're hovering over the counter to make sure that they're the ones to get more than everybody else. They were gluttonous. They were greedy people. The word in Ezekiel tells us they did not strengthen the hand of the poor. They did not strengthen the hand of the needy. They tended to their own needs. It was all about me, myself, and I. And if you were not one of them, if you were not on the in crowd, if you didn't look and talk like them, then you were as good as dead. Much like today in the churches across America. If everybody ain't looking, talking, and acting just like everybody else. If you're not testifying and dressing and looking for a spouse like everybody else, the, the folks start wondering if you really got Jesus at all. I need you to know today that while we continue to build mega domes and mega churches with cushy pews and the state of the art uh, jumbotrons, and with while one in four people in this country are still going hungry at some point in their lives, there's something wrong. Attendance in America's churches continues to be a perpetual fashion show while people in its neighborhoods are yet going without homes and to live in and in suitable clothes to wear, going without places to bathe or maintain any sense of their own dignity. I'm asking you today, who are you calling a sodomite? The Bible tells us that they were a selfish people. They would not help the poor and needy. They were a proud and haughty people. They thought that they were better than everybody else. And the word tells us that they did abominable things in the sight of the Lord. Now that word abomination in the Hebrew translates into detestable. Detestable. They were doing detestable things. They were a people that were doing detestable things before God. Now I ask you again, what kinds of things do you think are detestable before the Lord? What kinds of things does God hate? Pat Robertson, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> Pat Robertson and much of the mainstream religious society would want you to believe that God is particularly adverse and detests people who are homosexual. They will holler and spit and prophesy across their pulpits till you buy into a belief that quite frankly bears no truth in the word of God. In fact, they've hollered it for so long that the moment you hear the word abomination, all anyone can think about is gay people. So there are those that would say, see, abomination, detestable things before God. There it is. There you have it. It was those filthy faggots that wanted to have sex with the angels that appeared to be men. It was those sissies that brought the wrath of God upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And I say it's a lie from the pit of hell. 
It is a lie from the pit of hell. It's a lie from hell that is propagated by money and power hungry preachers who would assume let you spiritually die, let you emotionally die, just assume you curl up and die before they will admit they were wrong in their interpretation of the scriptures. So you want me to prove it to you? You can prove it to yourself. You really could. But we won't pick up the Bible and look at it for ourselves. You, you'd rather accept a spoonful of rat poison and while they were calling it Captain Crunch. And you sit up there crying and dying and say, ooh, this don't taste like Captain Crunch. It burns. <laughs> but you're steady eating it. You better wake up and start looking at what they're trying to feed you. All you need to do is read the Bible. And you can see for yourself what abominable or detestable things are to God. Proverbs chapter 6. Turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 6. Chapter 6 beginning at verse 16. This is not in your bulletin. It's in your Bible. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 If you can't find it right now just get somebody to write it down or write it down for you know for yourself or get somebody to write it down for you I'm reading Proverbs chapter 6 beginning at 16 and I'm reading Thank you Jesus these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil. A false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discords among the brethren. Can I ask a question? Can I ask where in the Bible it says that sissies and faggots were the cause of the destruction of Sodom? Can I ask why the popular Christian message today is one where the church is pointing its long finger at the LGBT community for all of America's social ills without first looking at itself in relation to what the scriptures really say and seeing their own acts of sodomy? Can I ask why preachers continue to lie to their congregants about this story for the sake of the hoop and the amen or the filling of the offering plate or perhaps subsequently the lining of their own pockets. Can I ask why they won't preach what the Bible really says or preach what will produce life in people rather than bearing false witness and causing discord among God's people. Can I ask why, if the truth makes us free, then why are more people attending churches today across America more bound than they have ever been? I ask today, who are you calling a sodomite? I declare to you today that God's displeasure is not about gay sex in of itself. God is not mad about gay marriage. God's displeasure is, however, in those who, ha who behave like sodomites. Right, right, right. Now, can you be gay and behave like a sodomite? Yes, indeedy. Can you be straight and behave like a sodomite? Yes, indeedy. Can you be behaving like a sodomite right now? Being a sodomite beyond just being from Sodom is about a heart condition that has rejected the grace and the instructions of God. Hearts that are arrogantly proud, gluttonously greedy, never satisfied, always wanting more than their share, ignoring the needy, shunning the poor, city of Dallas, 
They are liars and people who shed the blood of the innocent gay bashers. They are always planning something evil and they're always ready to run to get it done. They bear false witness when they teach their own brand of the gospel and they cause division and discord with their destructive words. Without all the fancy hooping and hollering, which I don't do anyway, after you get your mind untwisted about the true definition of a sodomite, you evaluate yourself against the word of God. Ask yourself, am, am I a sodomite? Am I guilty of sodomy? And after you have evaluated yourself, then maybe you might want to take a look at who you allow to speak into your life. The pastors and the preachers and the teachers, the prophets, the evangelists and the apostles, do they bear the fruit of a sodomite? Look at your churches, our, our workplaces, our social service agencies, yes, but it all begins with a hard look at self. And hey, you know, God very well may decide to destroy America for sodomy. But the truth of the word tonight is that America can no longer point this Bible story at gay men and women saying it's all your fault because it's just not there. It's just not there. So tonight, you know what? I'll go on record. They might beat me up afterwards, but hey. I salute the decision in New York to allow LGBT American citizens the freedom to marry whom they choose. Freedom from religious and social oppression that would inhibit individuals from securing their unalienable rights endowed to them by God. The unalienable rights of life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. And if we, as a country, still have any patriotism or allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, we will allow all of its citizens to be one nation under God, indivisible. We'll stop trying to draw lines between us that separate us and we'll savor liberty and we'll promote justice for all, for everybody. Let's not let America go down in infamy as Sodom did. Let's not let being an American become synonymous with being an abomination before God. Becoming synonymous with the things that the Lord truly hates. But let us please. Let us please preach and speak the truth. Let us walk in humility and away from pride. Let us seek to meet the needs of and share with others. Let us be active in the things of God. Right. And America, may God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood and sisterhood <laughs> from sea to shining sea. The word of the Lord tonight is telling us, and for those of us that will really understand and grab a hold of the true meaning of the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, means that, yes, there is the potential that any one of us could fall into the trap of being prideful, of being caught up in being about me, myself, and I, uh, 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 being gluttonous and greedy. But this misconception, even, even to this day, the legal term that we have in our legal system for the word sodomy is based on an idea that is false. To the point that now the only time that every time we use that word, they think about and alienate a class of people that Jesus died for. 
that Jesus died for. So I say it today. There needs to be a recall on the definition of the word sodomy. And we're all of America, all of America needs to examine themselves according to the word of God and stop trying to point the finger, begin to look on the inside, begin to realize that, you know, I could be the one for which God's wrath is kindled. 